on his feet. And, uh, it relates right here in Rochester. It relates here in Rochester. And what for me, what I got out of it is that um, it kind of helps me tamper down. Because being honest, I got some fears, you know, just because this brother didn't have no fear. I have fears that I can um, be involved in those type of encounters and make it out alive. Uh, what this shows me, gives me strength that I can't stand strong in the encounters with the, be it the mayor, the police, mm -hmm. the police chief, and I can live another day because I sometimes I might, um, I be thinking I, I might not be able to get through this. And so rather than even deal with it, you know, I back off. That's why I have nothing but admiration for this brother for not backing off because he's lived through it. This inspired me, maybe not to go quite as far, but it, I'm gonna take a couple more steps. You know, um, and it can inspire people in the community because that's what it's gonna take, uh, people in this community. And another thing about this movie, you don't even say it in there, man. Um, he, the film, filming has empowered him, this is equalizing, but they ain't just talking this talk. They, this is in effect. They got an after hour pro, after school program where they're teaching youth how to film. Um, they're putting this in effect. They ain't just here. Some kumbaya, we're going to show you this movie. They putting the work in, man. Um, I ain't got nothing but admiration for these brothers, man. And, um, I'm going to try to follow in your footsteps. I ain't going to do the filming, but um, there's other things I can do. Thank you. How you doing, everybody? My name is uh, Bowen Suchak, and I'm the uh, co-director and co-producer of the film. Um, I, I just want to, first off, just thank everybody for coming out tonight to this event, and really thank the, um, the folks who put this, this event tonight together, as well as the, um, the screening we had last night. And um, I think it's really, for me, you know, making this film was really something that was something that I couldn't, I could not do because the way that Ira and I met, Ira literally walked up to me on the street, and we had never met before. He walked up to me and he said, "Your name's Bowen, right?" And I was like, "Yeah." He said, "You need to make this movie with me. It's called The Throwaways." And um, I was like, "Who the hell are you? I don't even, I've never met you before." <laughs> and um, so. Yeah, he's gonna be here for a couple of days. You probably know everybody in Rochester by the time he leaves. But um, but the thing that was so powerful as we started talking about the I the idea of the film, which was to actually it originally was not to film Ira's story, but to go out and see other people's stories of, of being you know feeling like they're thrown away. That I started to hear Ira's story, and I said, man, you got I want to tell your story. And it took him a while. I mean, it actually didn't convince him until we met with Michelle Alexander in New York City, and, and she really agreed with me that his story was was representative of thousands, if not millions, of people across this country who are struggling with being formally incarcerated and trying to get their lives back together. But I took it another step and actually decided to speak out and become an activist, which I think is a really empowering part of this film, is that not only is he continuing to try and survive out there, but He's actually putting his voice and himself on the line. So um, this is a project that you know was a labor of love for us, and you know we do have an Indiegogo campaign which is online, trying to raise some funds to finish up the film and get it out to as many people, so we can do more events like this. So I encourage you to grab a card that's on the table as you walk out. Just spread the word, and I, I thank you guys for coming out tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, hi, I'm also, my name is um, Pastor Nina Ward. I'm the pastor um, here at Interfaith Gospel Tabernacle. Um, I want to thank Arsenal and um, a few of the others, and I want to thank Enough is Enough for giving me a chance and opportunity to see the film ahead of time. And um, when they spoke to me about it at one of the meetings, I said, after watching it, I said, you know what, you're more than welcome to come and have left the church. And even though they had a few words, I said, it's nothing that we haven't heard before. <laughs> I said, but it's something that needs to be seen and heard. Number one, um, I first of all, I'd like to say that I myself am a mother of a son that is incarcerated. And um, just seeing the film, um, not only has it empowered me, but to even speak those things um, even into him um, as he comes 
out, but let him know that he's not a throwaway, and there is going to be obstacles that he must face, um, but he can be an overcomer. And just looking at the film once again and realizing there's nothing that we cannot do, um, there's no barriers, there's no inferiors, um, if we walk straight forward. I also want to let you know that I, as most of us already know, that um, my husband was a victim of police brutality. Um, Benny Ward um, in the wheelchair um, made the first. Um, so even with dealing with that there, I have become an activist. Maybe that's what it took in order for me to get involved. Um, but I just want to thank um, Ira once again, a man of um, egotisticness, <laughs> and just realizing that allow nothing um, to allow you to um, separate you and to continue to go on and to walk. Um, this walk, I just want to thank um, all of you for having a chance, the opportunity to come out here, and for those that took the time to see this. And like you said, it's not about the point of talking about it, let's be about it. Um, and just understanding that what he's done and what he's doing, even taking a film production and giving it to children, it's an empowerment that we have to go even beyond, not just talking about being an activist and doing the things in the community, but making a change within our community. Um, so I just want to say once again, thank you once again, and here you go. First, I want to say um, I thank my higher power, who, who I choose to call, you know, my God. Um, for this opportunity to bring this film to you. This this is a sneak preview. I want to let you guys know this. No, we're, we're doing this. Nobody has really seen it. We're in film festival mode. This is not out there. So for you guys to allow us to come in here, and I've heard about the situation with the person in the wheelchair. I heard about that woman getting beat up. I've seen the film. So I was like, yo, we got to go there. We got to present this. I, luckily, I knew our city who was from here who was a, um, a, a very vocal part of us getting here. And, you know, I, I want to thank Arsene, you know, for doing what he did. You know, and believe in us, you know. Arsene has been on this journey with us for like three years. He, he, he remembered when I started it and how we was in Albany together. So, you know, I just like to say that's my boy. You know, I don't care. You know, I don't care what nobody says. He came here. He came here to Rochester. He wasn't scared. He knew this thing was needed. But I want to do this. I did it last night. He made fun of me. But I have to do this before we start on this Q and A. And this is an audience participation thing. Okay. So I need your help. It's going to be short, but we're going to we're going to jam here. All right, for a minute. And I'm going to start something. Everybody knows this song. But if I want you to join in, when I say it's your turn, okay? I'm gonna start, here we go. Sometimes in our life, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. Wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong, then I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Everybody now, for it won't be long till I'm gonna need. Somebody to lean on. Everybody said, just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. There just might be a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. I'm going to get it right. Yeah. There is a load that you have to bear that you can't carry. Yeah, I ride up the road, but I'll share your load if you just call me. Everybody say, just call me when you need a hand. Call me when you need a hand. Call me. When you need a hand, 
Everybody say, call me. Yeah. Call me. Now sing it like a me. Call me. Yeah. Call me. Yeah. Okay. I always used to wish that I could sing. <laughs> now I wish he could. <laughs> but the brother's fear showed you the film and his encounters with the mayor, the police chief, the police. Uh, he's fearless. And then he's shown it again. <laughs> with his, with his <laughs> I love you, brother. I'm ready, man. I guess now we're gonna be taking questions from you. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, I'm a, a film student at RIT. Uh, I've also been previously in Um Hello. Uh, by the hand of God, it may I should be walking across RIT stage with my master's in fine. <laughs> You know, Ricardo, but uh, from government introduction to things due to my prior addiction, I have 15 years clean. Um, recovered my uh, <laughs> And those applause are such an honor. Thank you. <laughs> yes, but I, I am a very humbling person. I can say all that knowing and totally relate to what you are doing. I think the most powerful shot that is an issue I have taken upon myself studying women and gender studies, social issues, anthropology, um, looking at Rochester, and my thesis is gonna be on Betty Tyson. Um, that's just one of the stories that happened here. And I think, a few, yeah, I just see some head shaking about this. I heard the other one, Google the case, because it is a very important case in Rochester. But the most powerful shot that, that I seen in this film that really hit me was when you were standing outside the Urban League building with the broken window. What, can I say, what the fuck was that? Excuse me, Turk, but what was, what? That hit me so hard because when you get educated, you realize some stuff. And it's sad to take somebody who spent 25 years on the street and mess around and put a, a master's education in their hand because I can apply both sides. Mm -hmm. My family's from Alabama. I've seen racial, racial issues. Um, if anybody remember the white liberals dropping people court uh, and right to the, I mean, to see the condition of that urban league building mm -hmm. and to look at some of the things, and I appreciate all the, all the organizations that are here and all the yes, organizations yes. and the nonprofit organizations that are really doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. Okay, because we got a whole lot of organizations that's getting money in this country and they ain't doing shit, but right. putting it in their pocket. Yeah. And that's a whole other way. I'm going to talk about it in our about that whole other issue mm -hmm. about the money that's coming that's not going where it's supposed to be Okay, because that's the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. And the unification of the, the poor, and it's not just black people, it's the poor, it's the caste system. The poor, the black, the, the, the people with records, we all have to get together. The poor people have more power than what we think because these places and these resources that's supposed to be helping the poor, the people that's getting hired to run them, period. And you know, I got all these, all these, um, uh, what do you call them, just starter, starter organizations. We need all of you to get together and advocate for putting this money where it's supposed to be. That's why you see all the abandoned buildings and all these neighborhoods because the money is not going. And there is money that's supposed to be going in the next neighborhood. So with that said, um, I don't I don't want to take up over too much either. But I don't know, how do you feel? And, and I see your look when you looked up at Urban League. You know, we can ask for people to unify. But then it always seems to be something that gets that little bit of power that still takes off and runs with the purse. Mm -hmm. 
that that scene that you see, they knocked that building down. Wow. Um, the gentleman that ran that was a man in Albany by the name of Aaron Dare, who took the money <coughs> and he missed. Yes, the punch. And now he's doing a 20 year bid. But with that said, that was what 10 years ago, Bob? That hurt us economically. Big time. Because honestly, yo, we can't give these people that money and explain, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Expect them to do the right thing. So why don't we take the money and do the wrong thing we're going to do anyways? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and not even that, but the buildings I showed that was abandoned, they don't knock them down too. You know what I'm saying? Because they knew this was coming out. They knew they were going to give us support. So what the support that we need is on the ground for grassroots organizations, people like you that's doing things. People like Arseni and the groups that just brought us here. Because the people that are getting the money are not doing the right thing with the money. Exactly. But we know a, a, a simpler plan, and it's, it's called ruining our devils. We need to go back to the old school, but a lot of stuff we're doing. And part of that is learning how to grow our own food, um, using solar, and, and selling your energy back to the grid. And th this is stuff that we can do. It may cost us a little bit of money to get it off, but we also have a plan for that. So one of the things, I'm going to say this, I'm sorry I got the candy in my mouth, but one of the things that we're trying to do is use this, this movie as a focal point to do forums. I already got Dr. Ben Chavez, who used to head the NWC, uh, the MCCP, um, uh, Dr. Wilmer Leon, some commitments from some top-notch people, you know what I'm saying? I know uh, Michelle Alexander wrote the book, The New Jim Crow, gave us her blessings three years ago. That's why she appears the way she appears in the film. Um, but not only do that, to raise you know, consciousness and funds, we got the old school rabbits. You guys remember uh, self-destruction? You know, I'm talking about those guys are coming back into the fold. KRS-One. I've done a film, I'll show you the video that I've done with KRS-One. We have Eric B and Rakim. We have some other great people. What we're gonna try to do is raise these going to have these concerts in these places but part of the proceeds because these guys know I'm like listen you're going to get your money you're not you're not like Lil Wayne and them all right now we're going to get you we're going to pay you feed you but you know you've already been there it's about it's about our future now give this money back into our communities you know what I'm saying as a resource uh, do, trying to do a uh, scholarship for a young man I'm not thinking about giving it to a nonprofit. You know what I'm saying? Because they already showed me that they're not going to do what they want. They're going to use it on, on their, what's the word? Their, uh, yes, their costs. They're going to do, they're going to they're gonna spend the money on their employees, the ones that they're, you know, not on the programs. You know what I'm saying? It's all going to be for the people that are in administration. They're going to have to pay them. To do what? You know what I'm saying? I get it. You know what I'm saying? So you want to use me, we're going to use me in the right way. Now, I'd rather give that money to a brother who wants to get a scholarship that he can eat for that year in college or get some books or somebody wants to start up a company doing something that's going to benefit my family. I'd rather give it to you and take a chance on you. You know what I'm saying? Then give it to somebody that's gonna, I know is going to pay for the administration. I don't see it in the street. I still see the same thing, you know. And then we're already doing it. Like, Bowen's doing teaching the youth. He does youth FX. He teaches these young kids. And they're, in, they're going into film festivals themselves. They did one on the N-word that I was in, and it was very impressive, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what you guys go to, um, he went to uh, Woodstock with the group this year, and uh, um, and he, he gets fighting, he teaches. He, he's a teacher, he teaches at the free school. So I've learned through watching and doing all this, and I don't want to take too much time on this question, but I just want to let you guys know that there are things happening and we need people like you to get in the ground grassroots movement. What you can do is tell people about this, share this. You know what I'm saying? Tell them, look at our kicks, our, our indie go and say, you know, we need money. We got two weeks to go, okay? We don't need much to do much. You know what I'm saying? But we need to do it, but we all need to stick together collectively in the grassroots organizations because we know these people ain't thinking about us. That's what I'm saying. 
to, yo, because I was inspired by this right here. I just met my man, I was met like 15 minutes ago. Outside of there, he came in the hood, he was like, boom, y'all I'm doing this right here, right here. I want brothers to come through and come check this out. You know what I mean? And so, boom, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna come through here. You know what I'm saying? See what's happening with this. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and boom, I'm in light. You inspired me, brother. And that's just what I feel, man. You know what I mean? And that's what's up. You know, I, you know, I'm MC and all that, but all that ain't got nothing to do with that. But I'm just saying, man, you, you show me another way, man. I'm getting filmed in it. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to do that right there, y'all. If you know what, in uh, peace, y'all, that's it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> situation that happened that I experienced back uh, three years ago. Uh, me and some brothers got together and we started an organization called Fathers of Four. And for the Fathers of Four there, we got together and we took we took our knowledge and our skills and, and we brought in brothers that had um, felonies, or brothers that was homeless, brothers that were just, um, just looking for a way they can make an honest living and come out of the streets where they don't have to sell drugs. Or, or be in that violent life anymore. They want to make a change in their life. And the moral to the story is that and once we got the program going and stuff, and we struggled the first year, me and the other brothers came out of our pockets, and, and we even provided a, a light meal for the guys who came. And um, the course that we were given was called the station engineer course. Also, we gave a, a, just a cleaning course to taught people how to clean. Um, we had a security, a security class, people that get their security license and stuff. And then what we did with the station engineer class is what we do, we prepare them that they go down to the city and they take a test. The city licensed them. Once you get these licenses, then you can elevate and you go get your job. If you already in a job, just like a cleaning job, we route to the city school district, which I'm, I'm a prime example myself, which I paid $700 to go back to school myself. And, and I had to take my, my rent money, you know, to go pay this here, you know? Okay, yeah, so what I did, and me and the brothers created a way that, that these brothers can come off the streets and get this for free. And what, like I say, when they come to the class, we also fed them and everything out of our pockets. Now, the thing, the thing we did, we had graduation, we invited the superintendent of the Rochester City School District, he came, he spoke at, at, at our graduation. We invited, the mayor wouldn't come, so we get, so he sent this assistant. And, and they got up and told not only us, but to everybody that was there, that they were gonna help us fund this program and we was gonna be situated. Because one of the guys who ran for mayor against the, against the, the mayor at the, prime, at the time, um, he ripped us off, okay? He, wrote, he was one of the grant writers that we went through. He came in, we had meetings after meetings after meetings. And, and when, he, when the funds came, he shortchanged us so much that we didn't get absolutely nothing from him, okay? Now, on top of that, now, 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 so we searching for another way to fund this program. The program was very successful. We had a 90% graduation rate, okay? We were taking um, dudes that didn't have GDs, um, couldn't even read or write, you know, but we was helping them at least they got a job. I, I hit the pavement for about six months. I had 12, 12 felonies, guys that in the program that have felonies. I went out and got 10 of them jobs. The other two, the only reason I didn't get them jobs because they went back to, um, one of them was living in Virginia, and one was, he came from somewhere else. And he came, they just came into our program. They left back. And that was very difficult to get them jobs because they had a felony. Um, the thing that got me though is that I felt so hurt and so betrayed when, when you got the mayor's assistant come there and tell us, just write me up a grant. I like this program, I got y'all. The superintendent um, of the school district came and spoke and told not only me, everybody in, was in the audience that day. He was gonna give us some money and stuff. And what you know, and this is my question, but the thing is too, that what hurt me was, was made me so destructive, we didn't get a dime. Not from neither one of them. Not from the mayor's office, not, from the, not even from the school district. And this was a program that we took um, young men from the age of 18 to 50, 55, 60, came in. And 
and we help the devil. You know, and we only, the, the thing you got me is that you only can you only can run this race for so long because how long can we take we do this program out of our pocket? You know, and and that's the thing that um, to me that 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 the the, the mayor's office and uh, superintendent school that's they were they were they were betting on you know okay in a way for us to be a failure you know. And the thing was, like I said too, if you see somebody that's trying to do something so positive, I thought, and, and so my my, 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 co my co workers and, and the other fellows, guys who helped me with the program, you know, we felt that, you know, people are going to get in line with us, you know? Because we're doing something positive. You know, we're doing something, we thought we're doing something great, you know? Well, but, but what I found out that if it ain't coming from them, it doesn't work, you know? Well, check in January because we got a new mayor, man. Yeah, we might try and stuff. And I had a experience with her too, so I'm just go there. Yeah. 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 My name is Stevie Johnson. Hey, let me say something. You know, I, I don't like to talk about myself. Um, I got a lot of experience too. Um, on the front lines here in Rochester, um, all the time. Been in prison, been drug abuse, alcohol abuse homeless, been through all of that. Um, and I agree with you about you couldn't go, uh, keep going out your pocket. And I gotta keep it real here, man. Um, us talking about we feeling them, we need to go to that website and support this so that they can keep That's it right. going. Right. And, if, and, and, and keep it real, everybody can, but the ones who can't, you need to put it on your website, um, on your Facebook. Because the one thing I know in this neighborhood, I live right down the street here too. Um, we as a people, we're nosy. If we keep seeing this, we keep seeing somebody talking about the throwaways on Facebook, we're going to come out and we're going to support it. We're going to see, we want to see. And so if you, if you can't help fund it, uh, man, pass the word around, man. Um, let it get contagious, for real. Because if we don't do that, um, we ain't really, we ain't really um, supporting nobody, and I'm not one to be asking people for support. I be out on the front line, and never ask nobody for nothing. I know, but these brothers, they can't keep traveling and all of that. They still, you know, he say it one way, but I'm gonna keep it real here. He's still homeless. He ain't living. He got his own place. He living with somebody, man. They need support, man. They ain't gonna, they sitting there with, like, with some pride, they ain't gonna ask you, man. I'm asking you, man. Support these brothers, man. They doing good work. Please do that, man. Yeah. Steve, I just wanna say, first off, your program sounds like something that needs to be replicated all across the country. Mm -hmm. Not just supported here, but that should be all across the country. Oh. And, and I'll say that the thing that I've learned, you know, in many years that I've been working in grassroots organizations is that the money is always this thing that you chase sometimes, you know, because you, you need it, right? But what really the power is in, in the people in this room and the people in the community. And I think one of the things that we have to, I guess, come to terms with, and it's really hard sometimes because, um, is that this is a struggle for a reason, you know what I mean? There, there's powers out there that do not want these movements, what you're doing to succeed, they don't want you to succeed, they don't want Ira to succeed. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, you don't have to sit here and say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory or something like that. The proof is everywhere you look. You know, when we started making this film, somebody asked last night, well, what'd you get your funding for, from? And I said, what funding? Because there's been no funding. To be honest, there's been no funding. We did a Kickstarter two years ago. We got about $8,000 off of that. And that allowed us to travel around to some of these places and make a film, help Ira get some um, equipment so he could start continue, you know, continue to do his work as well. And besides that, it's just been me and him, blood, sweat, and tears. And we've applied for every documentary fund, every grant. You know, I've written grants, successful grants, so I know how to write them. I didn't have to, you know, worry about someone else taking it. We got denied for every single one. Now. I have, I have a good friend of mine who's a filmmaker, and two years ago he made a film about a Dominican baseball player and his rise to being scouted by the major leagues. And so he follows this, this kid as he grows up. He took it to HBO, and the people at HBO said, it's a beautiful film, but we can't, we can't buy it. And he said, why? So there's no white people in it. Yeah. 
I said, who's gonna watch? Who's gonna who's gonna watch this movie? You know, and and he and this and this guy was no. I mean, he's been he's done like you know thirty for thirty stuff. He's been a filmmaker for years, and that was really discouraging to him. And I, and I remember that because look at the media, look at what is being put out there. You know what I'm saying? So we have to create our own media. We have to create our own movements that rely on coming to places like this, churches, community spaces. And we're gonna try and get the theaters, we're gonna try and get the little theater and all these other independent theaters. But I think I have to remind myself to stop chasing yeah. some dream, like I'm gonna get you know HBO or PBS or some of these bigger places to pick it up because this film challenges the narrative that they have written. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and we have to be careful about that. And one of the things, the reason why I work with young people is because that's where it's gonna start. I mean, we gotta teach our young people. We gotta educate them about <laughs> social movements and about, you know, you know, revolutionary movements that have happened that have been led by people of color because it's happened all across, you know, the world, you know, and, and one thing that, you know, people, you know, people know about the Occupy movement, but people don't know that Resurrection City was something that was started by Martin Luther King and Bernard Rustin, it was a part of the poor people's movement, which is the real reason, in my opinion, they shot him. that they killed Martin Luther yeah. King, is he said, civil rights, okay, now we're going to start getting poor people educated and in the streets. And they were like, oh shit, hold up. Come on, poor people started a revolution. Because you gotta look, you know, and that's history, you know what I mean? And Resurrection City, they said for 40 days, they were right on the mall. They set up tents right on the fucking mall, and they stayed there for 45 days until the cops came out, beat them up, and drove them out of there. You know, but that's history that a lot of people don't know, and I think that's part of it. It's like we have to teach people the history, and the history that's going on now with these cases happening everywhere. You know, it's happening in every single major city in the United States. Police brutality, police shooting people, they're getting away with it left and right. We need to stop this. And this is part of what we're trying to do with this film, is have these conversations started. So, you know, I hope that people here that might not know each other, I mean, connect with people that may be able to help you. So forget about the mayor's office, you will find someone else to write you a grant. You know what I mean? Someone that you know that can do that for you. The way she appears in the film. Um, But not only do that, to raise you know, consciousness and funds, we got the old school rabbits. You guys remember uh, self-destruction? You know, I'm talking about those guys are coming back into the fold. KRS-One. I've done a film, I'll show you the video that I've done with KRS-One. We have Eric B and Rakim. We have some other great people. What we're gonna try to do is raise these, we're gonna have these concerts in these places, but part of the proceeds, because these guys know, I'm like, listen, you're gonna get your money, you're not, you're not like Lil Wayne and them all right now. We're gonna get you, we're gonna pay you, feed you. But you know, you've already been there. It's about, it's about our future now. Give this money back into our communities. You know what I'm saying? As a resource, uh, do, trying to do a uh, scholarship for a young man. I'm not thinking about giving it to a nonprofit. You know what I'm saying? Because they already showed me that they're not gonna do what they want. They're gonna use it on, on their, what's the word? Their, uh, Yes, their cost. They're gonna do. They're gonna. They're gonna spend the money on their employees, the ones that they're, you know, not on the programs. Right. You know, so it's all gonna be for the people that are in administration. They're gonna have to pay them to do what? You know what I'm saying? I get it. You know what I'm saying? So you want to use me? We're gonna use me in the right way. And I'd rather give that money to a brother who wants to have a scholarship that he can eat for that year in college or get some books. Or somebody wants to start up a company doing something that's gonna benefit my I'd rather give it to you and take a chance on you. You know what I'm saying? Then give it to somebody that's gonna I know is gonna pay for the administration. I don't see it in the street. I still see the same thing, you know. And then we're already doing it, like Bowen's doing teaching the youth, he does youth effects. He teaches these young kids, they're in they're going into film festivals themselves. They did one on the N-word that I was in, and it was very impressive. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you guys go to. Um, he went to uh, Woodstock with the group this year, and uh, um, and he he gets spotted. He teaches. He he's a teacher. He teaches at the preschool. So I've learned through watching and doing all this, and I don't want to take too much time on this question, but I just want to let you.